something about safety, not security, just safety. So how to um, to prevent accidents. And I'm talking about ATS. ATS is for me automatic transport systems, but it's a very vague term. It can be anything from pods to automatic cars to semi-automatic buses, etc. So anything which is on the road or on its own uh, lane, which is automated, is for us an ATS. And I'm talking about vehicles sometimes, but I mean the total system. Safety is always about the system, not about a particular vehicle. But before I start, maybe just a few words about Ricardo. The first time I heard Ricardo as a company, I thought about some Italian ice cream company or something. <laughs> it's not, it's about engines. It's a hundred years company. Sir Ricardo there, the picture formed it some hundred years ago. And it's about engines and transmissions, vehicle systems, data systems, electronic software, hardware, anything you can find in a vehicle. I myself come from a railway company. I used to work at a subsidiary of Dutch Railways, an uh, engineering group of 200 people. This group was bought, bought by Lloyd's Register some years ago, and the same group was then bought by Ricardo. So now uh, well I have a background in railways and working in an automotive company, which uh, I like very much, because in the railway times I used to work on buses. It was possible, and now it's yeah, this perfectly fits. So. My background is then railway and I try to, yeah, to, to use it in automotive <laughs> applications. Sooner or later we're gonna have automated systems on our own. <coughs> I don't know when, I don't know what exactly, but I think everyone will agree that we're gonna have them. And there's gonna be a transition phase there's going to be a phase where there is normal cars and automatic cars and semi-automatic cars and they will have an interface and it's going to be very complex. Nevertheless, the general opinion is that the total accident rate can be reduced dramatically because human drivers are causing most of the trouble on the roads. So if you can eliminate them and have a good technical solution, potentially the number of accidents can be reduced. But if you want to do that, one thing is very important, that your systems are safe. If they're not, you have only one, maybe two chances to convince society, and otherwise that might be a picture. Automatic systems are not safe, so we won't have them, and we stick to human drivers. So it's very important, just at the beginning of introduction, that there is not that many accidents. Of course, there might be one or two accidents. That there, there will be, or there has been already, and I just hope it won't be that much, so that the public opinion will be still that the automated systems are going to be safe. Now that's what I'd like to elaborate on. How can we convince society, authorities, and ourselves ourselves in a project that the system we provide is safe and it's very hard because it, normally it's a new system we don't have 10 or 20 years of experience some examples <laughs> are there but it's very small there's not that experience of 100 years of cars manufacturers with in automatic systems so the challenge is to say up front before we start with the system that it's safe or not and we think we can help with that, providing a safety case. A safety case is to see as a pile of documents which give evidence that the system is safe according to some standards. Not 100% safe, but safe enough. Let's say twice as safe as normal buses and trams are at this moment in Belgium here for applications. That's what is accepted momentarily. So if we make it two times safe, might be good. What does the safety case look like? And how is it going to be made? Now we don't have to invent everything. There is standards on that already for decades. In the middle there is a very general standard on safety for machinery. 
that has involved in certain fields for nuclear plants, for medical device software, for the process industry, electrical drives, etc., but also for railway applications and for automotive applications, for road vehicles. And these two are very interesting for applications on the road which are automated. Some systems look like a train in their behavior, but look like a road vehicle in their appearance. So the combination of these two is for us the, you know, the best way forward to, to use the background. And they can combine easily because they have the same parent in the middle. If you look at them, they're quite similar. They use the same model, the same principles. That's what you can see here. It's the V model. It's in all those safety norms. And in general, it's about just writing down what you're doing. And check yourself every next step you take. Have you obtained what you were at the beginning? So at the top level, at the left, you start with a concept or item definition. What is the idea? It's going to be a bus between the harbor and the city center. Maybe 10 passengers per vehicle, maybe 24 hours operation, things like that. And once you have a concept, you can look at some hazards and you can make requirements. You can make requirements for the vehicles, for the infrastructure, and for safety as well. And all those requirements at the top are the start of the project. And then you go to the next step. You divide the requirements in subsystems, in infrastructure, in vehicles, in operation. And once you go down to the, to the bottom of the V, the requirements are split up in subsystems, in components, etc. That's normal engineering practice. What you have to do for safety, if you want to make some evidence, write down what you're doing. So write down every step and check whether the next step indeed will um, combine with the step before. So that at the end you will have what you intended to get at the beginning. It's a lot of work. A um, lot of costs as well. But I think at this time when you have a new system which is not yeah, but not experienced in, in many years or hundreds and thousands of kilometers, you have to do something like this. You have to prove in some way or another that your system which is new on the road is safe enough. Here you can see that there is very structured manners for deriving such a safety case. So how is it structured, uh, which steps can be taken, which standards uh, will provide tools in order to have all those steps connected, etc. It will help you to structurize things. It won't help you to bring down the work. You still have to think about all the requirements, write them down and check them. In fact, what you're doing is processing a lot of information into <coughs> one bit at the end. We are having pieces of evidence which can be fault tree analysis, which can be risk analysis, which can be requirement specification certificates from subsystems, test results from former systems. Anything might help to compile to an evidence that a system is safe enough or not. The answer might be no as well. If there's not enough evidence, or if there is even evidence that it's not safe, the answer is no. We have had seen projects where the answer was no. We've seen a lot of work doing all this, all those standards prescribed, tens, even hundreds of documents, if you follow them literally from A to Z, it's too much, I think, for a lot of applications. For some applications you have to do. For railways they have been written and if you think of a railway system with trains with thousands of people, one train can contain a thousand people um, running up to 160 kilometers an hour or 200 or maybe even three um, without brakes, it's metal metal, there are huge risks. Risks here in pot car systems are huge as well but not that huge. So I think there is a um, way of reducing the safety case. 
Not a principle, you should still follow the, set, the fee model. But I think it's not necessary to write down all the hundreds of documents. And it depends on the application, about how many cars, how uh, speedy are they, what are, is the surroundings, how many other traffic is there. Is it just a demonstration or will it be operating for the coming months or maybe years? All um, things, depending on the scope of the project, will define the depth of the safety case, I think. And normally in projects you see a small start with a test demonstration, maybe on test track, maybe the next step is on public road, and after that it will be exaggerated to a commercial application. And for all those steps, another safety case will be necessary. It can be started smaller and then adapted to the larger scope. And in that way it's possible to save money, to make it affordable to make a real safety case. This is something I just took from the railway world and it's a base of inspiration. Maybe something will happen in the pot world as well. I think now in most countries we are here on the left, situation A. There is an applicant, some city or some driving company who likes to make um, some project and there's a direct contact to the MIT, to the Ministry of Transport. And once the Ministry um, has seen the application in the safety case, they will give a permit and the project can start. But I think in time there might be more of those projects, there might be more mm. of um, test cases and in fact in the Netherlands the middle situation is now the case. There is a PRA, a um, authorization body, which is the RDW, and they have an assignment from the Ministry of Transport in order to, to look at applications and to give permits. So the applicant goes to the RDW, to the authority. And then I can imagine going further in time, there might be that many projects and that many projects which are so complex the RDW is not able to control them all and to handle all of them. Not in complexity but also not in number. And then extra party which is called an ISA Independent Safety Authority might look at the applicant as at the safety case and might say this system looks alright and I give a safety statement and the safety statement can go to the authorities which can return the permit. Might be the case in some years from now. <coughs> we'll see. A few of other <laughs> ideas, I'd, I'd like to hear them. Just a few projects we have been working on. Um, we have seen some of them already. London Heathrow, done by some colleagues of mine from UK as an ISA. I'm involved in the WePods project in the Netherlands, which is a small project on the university campus of Wageningen. The Fias bus in Eindhoven has been a project some years ago. It's a semi-automatic bus. It's able to, to guide itself along a path. There's still a driver in it. And I was asked if the system which controlled the wheels, etc., was safe enough, whether there was enough safety evidence. And the outcome of the funnel was a no. <laughs> the first project, <laughs> there was not enough safety evidence because the V model might have been taken, but there was not anything written down. So, yeah. <coughs> there's no evidence, you cannot say it's good enough at that point. Later projects of the same people showed that the evidence was already there for other projects, so it worked at the end. The master project from Together, we have been ISA for that. It's running, up and running very smoothly. We have been involved in the truck platooning from DAF as safety officer as well. And the demonstration has been in April this year and there will be next projects on truck platooning as well. And we are here in the Saventum Airport project for the line, which is a new project 
concerning uh, boats on the airport terminal going to the parking and back. I think something about the future, what we have now seen is that we can write a safety case during the project, during the engineering, during all the requirements, etc. And then at the end, the project is ready, all the engineering has been done, test has been done, and we say yes, perfect, and then the project starts. That's what I call old school fee cycle. There's a define, a project design, build, test, certify our work, and then the operation can start. That's how we do it for trains now and for normal cars. It's, it's going to be the same process now these days. But think of modern cars. They're manufactured, they're put on the road, and then one month later, you don't even know, they get an update over air, overnight maybe. Just the car is not the same anymore. It's changed, the behavior is the same. The control systems have been changed. Once you bring them for the, to the garage for having new oil or something, they might have new sensors. So the complete control system might be changed. What about safety case? These sensors have not been tested. The software has not been accredited. There's nothing in there which is the same as the car. So the safety case is not valid anymore. The car is still on the road. So I think we have to think of a solution how to deal with changing vehicles. Vehicles will be changing over and over. For the railways, there is a solution because they are changed as well. I'm working on the ICE project, the German high-speed train. There comes a software update twice a year, maybe once a year, and we can go through the fee cycle again and for all the changes checked and we say, well, it's okay. But I'm expecting for these type of pods, changes might be more and more, not twice a year, but maybe twice a month or maybe even twice a day. And then I think it's not possible practically to go through the fee cycle to do all the paperwork. So maybe there will be in the future, I'm not sure, but there might be some automatic <coughs> check of the behavior of such vehicles. They might collect data of their behavior, like uh, some examples here. How many times they do overspeeding, what about red light passing, uh, distance to their neighbors, etc. All those behavioral data might be collected and might give, an, uh, let's say, some uh, to, to help the homologation. So if the behavior is good enough, the homologation can be extended or maybe even made greater. Um, degree of autonomy might be increased, road types might be added as well. Just some thoughts. I'm not sure, but <laughs> we'll to see. Yes, whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Yeah. 